Thank you, thank you for joining me. I hope I have time to do what I want to do here today. Despite uh, it being not the original good time of year for repotting, I do have the opportunity this time of year to clean up and pot up my new Lelia gracilis, which came from the orchid room, Melissa Walker and Michael McCarthy. Very, very generous gifts. And despite the fact that being December, I'm okay with repotting this one because it's going to go into a setup of mainly lava rock. So I can tackle that straight away. And here's the Dendrobium aurantiflammeum, which also came in the package from Michael McCarthy. And this one is going into mainly lava rock as well, so I'm okay with repotting it at this time of year, December, not normal. If you're growing in a climate that can drop indoors to 16 degrees, but I'm going to do it because I do have roots. I have a new growth coming and I would like to at least be able to control the watering a little bit better than just having plain sphagnum moss. So that's the idea, and I hope that I have plenty of time to do both of them in this video. At least, depending on the daylight. All right, so let's um, at least get started. I've already prepared pots. I put chunky lava rock on the bottom of both of the pots. The other one you can see is over there. I don't have another square pot at this point in time for the dendrobium. I want to get one because I think that even though it looks big, it's fine being in just lava rock. I'm not too concerned about the size of the pot as such. But I would like to um, get me a square pot at some point. It's just the timing at the moment is not really conducive because you might see King here in the background. And at the moment, I'm not quite comfortable leaving him alone yet. It's only been a couple of days and I want to be able to control him and uh, train him with being present as opposed to, yeah, it'll be fine. And I'm gonna try not to get distracted, but we'll do the best we can. Let's see how good I am at multitasking. So the little gracilis has some roots growing, which is awesome. A few dead roots, but they're not too bad. I will keep the dead roots. I'm not going to cut these off. They're good for anchoring and they're going into a full inorganic media. So I need them to help me out in supporting the orchid in the pot. Whatever of the lava rock that stays on, I don't, I'm not going to try and be too picky in picking that lava rock. Good grief, bark off. Just thinking inorganic, inorganic, I'm already muddling up in my speech. So you see here are some dead roots. It's to be expected. It wasn't a kind of a medium to chunky bark, which is interesting. And let me just check and see what have I got down here. Is that two plants? Because if there's two in here, I don't think I'm going to separate them at this stage. I want to be able to have each plant support the other in the pot instead of wobbling around. So if this is in actual fact two plants, and I do believe it is, let me just show you. You see there would be a natural break in there. They're not joined, but I'm going to leave them together because as I mentioned, the more support each one gets in the pot, the better. I just pick out a little bit of the moss to have a little bit more control regarding how wet it's going to be around the base. And what I thought was scale, it's not. It's just like dust particles and residue because my little one from Floradia is not doing well at all. And this is such a gorgeous surprise replacement that I don't want to lose it. What a super, super healthy 
little gracilis this is, I must say. Now there's a little bit too much moss in here that I want to try and remove, minding the root tips that are there. And if I'm getting too pedantic, if that inkling creeps up in my mind, then it's time to stop. I'm gonna get the spout, the water spout, and give it a drench. All right, let's get in there. And sometimes it's just good to take a very sharp nozzle and do a little bit of a cleanup in between the rhizome instead of picking up and around with hands and fingers that are clumsy and can do damage as she goes back in and does a little bit more. Will you stop? Okay. Got moss growing up and around here. Again, I wouldn't be fussed about it if it, this were like spring, summer, I would actually encourage it, but not this time of year, not so fast. We are expecting some seriously cold nights coming. Whew, the temperatures are gonna drop, and that's why I'm anxious to get this done today while I can stand outside with a little bit of natural sunlight. Yeah, I can see there's a little... I'm going to leave it. Enough already. No, I'm not. Am I? Am I going to leave it or not? It wants to come apart. Uh, I bet that if you were made, taking bets, you knew this was going to happen, I bet. <laughs> and you're right. Okay, we find a little desiccated back bulb here. And there's another little one, but it's still firm, so I'm going to leave that. And now that I've got them a little bit more separated, I still find a little bit of debris that I can flush out. So yeah, I wanted to get this done today because you see how much water I'm using? There are no new growths on these, but I do not want them to be this wet when they go inside. Based on the forecast, this is, it's now or in five weeks or something like that. And not because every day is going to get cold, but simply because of the night temperatures. So I'm taking advantage of that. Now here's one. We're going to leave it like that. And because I separated it, I can get into some nooks and crannies in here as well. I hope I'm not working away from the camera. That would be really dumb. But both of them have roots growing. This one's a little bit more vigorous than the other one. But the other one also has roots growing. So this is great. Really, really chuffed about being able to do this now as opposed to waiting. There's still... There we go. Righty ho Okay, we're done with that. Now, let's get all the media in. I have some ceramics recycled from previous unpottings and cleanings ups. So this goes in to the bottom to get the wicking going. There we go. I have a little bit left, which I'm going to use to top up the top layer if need be. And then I'm out of ceramis, and for the dendrobium, I have plans to use Akadama mixed with terrarium grit. So I've watered my ceramis down, and let's see what's next. I have some small lava rock here on the left. 
where are my holes? They're back there. I'm going to get my label in. Not covering the holes. So you've got a direction of growth for this one. But what I'm going to do is take advantage of the big sized pot and just put them in the middle. Something like that. Okay, much needed now are two extra hands. Let me turn this around because I'll be working with my right hand. There we go. Let's get some in the bottom. And make sure that I know where my holes are. Okay, the last time I was doing this, I kind of filled up a little bit too radically. And I broke some. And I'm sorry that you're probably, if I get closer, see I work with my right hand and the way I'm holding them is actually going to obscure your view. Okay, let me see if I can do it Whoop, like this. Good thing that they're strong little plants. Good thing. I'm not 100% happy with how I'm doing this, but for the sake of filming, I hope that you can see something. I'm just filling out with small lava rock. And it's all a little bit awkward, but they're in place now to a certain degree. And now I'm going to use what's left of the ceramics around the base to start filling up a little bit the crevices. And then I'm going to add a little bit of sand because that is now going to filter down through where the roots actually are. If I had done it earlier in this case, because the pot is so big, the sand would have gotten straight through into the reservoir and there was no point. So my point is to get sand to start to tuck in around the roots. Now I'm going to go with a fine mist, otherwise I will be blasting the sand straight in through the media and that's not the point of the exercise. All right, that's one layer done. Okay, just gently trying to pour this around to stabilize the orchid further. And if need be, I'm gonna pull her up a little bit. I see that she's a bit low in the pot, which is not really a big problem. But it doesn't look aesthetically as nice as if she were a bit more visible up. There's plenty of space in that pot to get it right. Okay. Grab the two pieces. Just give it a little shake and a little bit of a pull up. There we go. And I think that is as good as we're going to do for now without aggravating the situation much further. One layer of sand just to cover the bases on the top. And I will repeat this depending how quickly the sand disperses, maybe in six months. 
but I doubt any sooner because we have, as I mentioned, that time of year. Now, just going to shower her with a little bit of a spray as opposed to the jet. Just to water her in. I'm not planning to fill the reservoir at this point, otherwise I would take my jug. This is just to make sure that everything where the roots are touching is wet. And that would be it for Lelia Gracilis. And now she's going to go where it's still nice and breezy over to my Tolumnia table. Over there. And we'll move on to the Dendrobium auranti lamio. Let's see what we've got to deal with, with the Dendrobium. I've already prepared my support, got the wire around, because if she's floppy in the pot, I don't want to be perpetuating the aggravation problem with the roots, because I don't know what I'm up against, apart from the fact I see nice roots on the top. And again, I am planning to get a nice square pot for this Dendrobium as well, not necessarily change the setup just because of aesthetical purposes, but I don't want her in this, this time of year. And boy, is this a floppy orchid. So yeah, woo, hello. Ooh, we like this a lot. But you see from the first watering, the sphagnum moss has actually not dried from when I had them soaking the CalMag Welcome Cocktail. So I, I do want it out. And if this new growth, yep, this new growth here is starting new roots. I don't know if you can see that nub in there. So I have backup in case I'm making a mistake. If this is a delicate rooted dendrobium, I do not know. And changing this wet environment to a slightly more drier environment, not very much drier because the Akadama is so water retentive, I'm actually buffering it with um, terrarium grit, which doesn't absorb water at all. I would use perlite, but that only provides aeration. Perlite absorbs water as well. So I would, if I had more ceramus, I would put this orchid into, in with the ceramus like all the others. But as I don't, I think this is actually going to work really nicely for these roots to get Akadama around them. Seeing that they're very, very used to a super moist, wet environment. They haven't deteriorated from the days that they've been waiting to, what, dry out? No, there was no drying out happening here. All right, not much of rocket science going on. We may actually get this done efficiently, on time, not rushed. So this is the Akadama with terrarium grit. And you can see it's very wet, but the terrarium grit will balance that out. The Akadama is my wicking material. It's not fill up too much so that we can get the roots in without getting up too high. I do have a direction of growth that I want to respect and I've already filled it up a bit too high, so I'll make a little bit of a crevice down there. I'm going to keep her in the middle for the time being because I do not want to put stress on the roots in the pot. I don't want to quetch them, there is no point. The idea being just to get her settled in a different environment that I can, I believe I can control better until I know the growing and water requirements of this orchid and see how it she reacts. So that's all I'm going to do. And I'm going to fill up again with my mix. This is an old cane, so we'll keep you up and out of it. So this is a branching root system, which is great. 
I like branching root systems. They're more forgiving as well. And I mixed up the perfect amount. Wow. Today was the day for repots. Sorry about that gate. Now what I want to do is just hold the orchid and squeeze a little bit to see if I can disperse the Akadama in and amongst the roots a bit. Now I can tie her off already so there's no wobbling and risking of snapping the cane at the base. Doesn't need much, just a bit of support. And I think we're okay. The other two orchids I'm going to wait because one of them is also going to go in Akadama, the Ceratostylus, in my opinion, Akadama with the grit. Uh, the other one is in Lekka. The Maxima Alba will go in Lekka, but I have to see some root action there before I even attempt that this time of year. Always keeping in mind that Lekka or any inorganic media has a cooling effect on the root ball. So it's just mindfulness, just to be a little bit like the time of year. I don't use heat mats. And these factors I just try to take into consideration when I can address who am I going to repot or not. And some need repotting, regardless of the time of year, simply because another 12 months, they just won't handle it. And I don't want to risk losing them simply because I am too hesitant to repot when they tell me this is the time. So there's my Auranti Flammeum with its shiny new tag as well. So I'm going to clean up and let's have a look-see. Brazil and Borneo. Cool grower, warm to cool grower, intermediate. Eventually I can leave my Auranti Flammeum outside, but not for the time being. I want it to get acclimated so I'm going to watch it indoors. It will get cooler temperature as it likes to have. And why didn't I mount it? Because of the time of year. If I had gotten this one in spring, I probably would have chucked it on a mount and I could throw water at it at liberty. But due to the time of year, I would prefer to have it in a pot, get to know it, get it acclimated, and then see how it responds and reacts. Should I be so lucky that it would bloom already in spring, I have no idea how big this orchid gets. If it's a seedling, you know, the canes are quite large. But should it bloom, then I want to see how I can present the blooms if I see them better upright or pendant. So those are the things that I've sort of been contemplating. Michael also said if you pot it up, you might be able to see the blooms better. So we'll go with that. I'm also more comfortable at this point having it in this setup because if I need to reduce watering, I can do that and I don't have to worry about is it too cold, space-wise, indoors, a lot of factors as to why I chose to pot it up in sort of an inorganic media similar to my tetragonum. My tetragonum does not have akadama in it, so just a quick disclaimer. And this one being a cool grower, perfect timing also for a repot because it's its time of year. It's growing now, we saw the roots were growing, there's root tips, but I'm not going to leave it outside just yet. I want it to come indoors where I can also control the temperatures a little bit. It will get cooler temperatures because I'll have it down close to the marble floor. And I'm not too concerned about that, but for the time being, I don't want to expose it to what the radical night temperatures can and will be in the coming weeks. So those are my Los Tres Amigos, two of them repotted and we'll see how they develop. And I appreciate so much if you stayed all the way to the end. Thank you very, very much for your time, for watching. Stay safe, take care, bye.